Welcome back to the Sage Audio channel. Today we'll talk about how to get your master loud without distortion. We'll cover a few techniques, some specific settings, and one particular plugin that can help you achieve this. Also, we'll listen to some real-time examples, so if you could, like, subscribe to the channel, and stick around for the full video. But first, if you're an artist, engineer, or producer, and you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample of it. All you gotta do is set up an account, upload the song, and we can do the rest. Making your master loud without distorting it is one of the most challenging things a mastering engineer can do. Although many would say to simply make the master quieter, and for good reason, this isn't always an option. There are times in which an artist prefers a master to be loud and to sound a particular way. And when this does happen, you can't simply tell the artist no. With that said, it's best to learn how to make a master loud without it distorting or becoming unpleasant sounding. So with that said, let's look at our first topic, which is to use true peak limiting and oversampling. One of the main ways to make a master loud is by using brick wall limiting. However, this is also the primary cause of distortion during mastering. When a signal hits this brick wall, the waveform will distort as peaks are truncated. This alteration of the waveform is almost inevitable, but there is another negative aspect of brick wall limiting that can be avoided. It's called intersample peaking, and odds are if you've used a limiter, you've heard the effects of it before. Essentially, intersample peaking is clipping distortion that occurs in between samples and is the result of improper quantization. What's worse, the louder a signal becomes and the more a waveform is pushed up against a brick wall, the more aggressive this clipping distortion will become. The good news is, is that it can be avoided by using true peak detection. If you enable true peak detection, you significantly reduce the number of intersample peaks. A few limiters that offer true peak detection are the FabFilter Pro L2 and a free limiter called Loudmax by developer Thomas Munt. But there's one more thing to consider when you're limiting, and that is aliasing. If the sampling rate of your session is low enough, odds are you're causing a form of distortion called aliasing, in which high frequencies that cannot be replicated are reflected down the frequency spectrum in the form of harmonic distortion. Now this is why many plugins offer oversampling, which increases the internal sampling rate of the plugin's processing, allowing those high frequencies to be replicated, and in turn avoiding aliasing distortion. What's more, this aliasing distortion can be loud enough to cause intersample peaking as well, so it needs to be avoided as much as possible. To avoid it, use oversampling. The more the better, as much as your computer will allow. Lastly, to reduce distortion when your track is converted to an MP3 or AAC file, reduce the output by about 1 dB. Now this won't increase your loudness, but it will reduce distortion when your track is uploaded or it's streamed. Number two, set the release of a limiter to about 30 milliseconds. Decreasing a limiter's release time means that the signal is attenuated for a shorter amount of time. This helps make the master louder since the overall level returns to normal quickly. However, if you use too short of a release time, you'll cause significant distortion to your low frequencies. Since low frequency waveforms are longer and last a longer amount of time than high frequency waveforms, setting a short release may mean that only part of the waveform is affected by the release. This alters the low frequency waveform's amplitude and potentially the middle of the waveform, causing it to distort. With that in mind, set the release time of your limiter to about or greater than 30 milliseconds to avoid distorting low frequencies. 
let's take a listen to the effect the release time has on limiting. Number three, try a double limiter approach. A double limiter approach is something that I've talked about before and a technique that can achieve great limiting timbre without distortion. By using two limiters instead of one, you reduce the pressure that would have been put on just the one limiter. Also, you can achieve a unique timbre by using two different limiter types or two different models with different characteristics. For this example, I'll use the Weiss DS1 to compress and limit with a slightly slower release to smooth transients and increase the volume. Then I'll follow it with a FabFilter Pro L2 using a more dynamic algorithm to cause mild expansion. Since some of the transients have already been attenuated, we can use a slower attack and a faster release to make this limiting louder. Now one thing to keep in mind is that the attack that I just mentioned here is not like a compressor's attack time, but instead the time before the compressor's release begins. Let's take a listen to the effect. Number four, use the Meta plugin with eight times over sampling. I usually don't advertise for one plugin in particular since there are typically a lot of good options out there for limiters, compressors, EQs, and so on. But this plugin is really one of a kind and can help you achieve a louder master without distortion. The Meta plugin by DDMF has a lot of functions. You can really achieve a lot with it, like sending the low frequencies to one compressor, the highs to another, and making other exciting routing choices that can really change how you master music. But the one function that I want to focus on here is the universal oversampling. For reasons that we covered earlier, oversampling is important. It reduces aliasing distortion and subsequent intersample clipping distortion. The problem is, a lot of plugins don't offer oversampling, so whether you like it or not, your session is slowly but surely building this distortion up over multiple plugins. Fortunately, Meta Plugin lets you introduce oversampling to all the plugins that are within its framework. So if you move your signal chain into the Meta Plugin's framework, you can add oversampling to all of your plugins simultaneously. It's one of those things that you'd have to hear to understand the somewhat subtle, but nonetheless impressive effect that it has. So let's take a listen to the plugin. So these are our thoughts on how to make your master loud without distortion. But what do you think? Is there a way to make your master loud that we didn't cover here? Let us know in the comments section below. Also, if you're an artist or an engineer, send us one of your mixes at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample. All you have to do is set up an account, upload the song, and we'll do the rest. 
But thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and share this video with your friends. This way we know if you'd like to see more videos like this one. Also, you can subscribe to the channel. We release three to four new videos every week and subscribing is the best way to stay up to date. There's a comment section where you can leave your thoughts on this video or you can make a suggestion for a future video. And again, if you're an artist or an engineer and you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.